Okay, crude drawing time. This is the radiator. You know how radiator works. Water comes from the engine, goes in one side, comes out the other. It's pretty simple. Water passes here. We need air to go this way. When we're moving down the road, obviously the air is naturally flowing across the radiator. When you are stopped or at a slower speed, you need a fan to pull the air across the radiator. So there's two ways you can do it. Let's say this is the front of the car, right? So that's the way the car would go. As you drive down the road, the air goes this way. So a pull fan would mean it sits behind the fan and pulls air this way. Don't quote me on the percentage, but this is the more efficient way. A pull fan is always stronger than a push fan. Uh, there is some information on that somewhere, and I think it's due to the atmospheric pressure, but the same CFM fan as a pull will be more effective than a push. This is our radiator setup. We have, get ready for the crude drawing, we have a turbo here. The intake is gonna go something like that with a real uh, cool filter. But this is the hottest part here, so we're gonna put a pull fan here on this side of the radiator. We're gonna put a push fan, and it's gonna go between the condenser and then the inner cooler will go here. Now it's important to have strong fans. You've seen the eBay fans, they're, they're, they'll look like a fan and they make a noise. They're not a very good fan. The only fan I use is Spall. If you watch our videos, you'll see it. Much, much stronger fan. Take a little bit more ampage than a cheap fan, but there's a reason for that. They move more air. So we're gonna go ahead and install that fan. All right, so this portion of the video is brought to you by Skunk2. And that's because they sent us this awesome fuel rail. They're sponsoring the car and helping us out with some of these parts. And I got a hold of Doug at Skunk2 and said, could you send me a composite fuel rail? And he said, you know what? It's on his way. And because of that, I want to go and do a detailed unboxing of this. I think it really deserves it. So I'm going to get George over here. He knows our style. He knows how much details we put into these unboxings. So I want him to keep up with the same level of detail. So he's going to go ahead and use his gang knife. And we're going to give you a full detailed unboxing. You ready? And there it is. Hope you enjoyed that detailed unboxing. We're gonna go ahead and install that on the Integra and that will give us the fuel requirements to start it up. Yay. So in all seriousness, this is one of my favorite fuel rails. For one, it looks really nice, but it's composite, so it's light and it doesn't accumulate heat. Accumulate meaning transfer heat from the intake manifold to this and the engine bay heat. It stays cool and it's a massive diameter. I think it's over half inch. Now, on one car in the past, you see these letters here. I actually took the time to make those color filled. We don't to match the car. Well, it took about six coats of paint and I was all day off and on doing that. So even though that sounds cool, I'm not doing that again. So one thing that someone's gonna ask me about, this doesn't screw by the way, this is for the factory fit in. It does unscrew and it has the nice threaded piece. You're gonna use the O-ring. There's a bunch of companies that offer a fit in. That way we can put our dash six on there. I think we are planning to use our factory regulator so you can use that, but there is a threaded piece if you wanna pick up that as a return or this end too, the same size. You can also put a fuel pressure regular, uh, fuel pressure gauge in there, that's eighth NPT. Oh, okay. Yeah, and these are not through drilled. Nope. So. Yeah, so we're going to leave that. We're going to put our return, our regulator on there, the factory regulator. And again, it's plenty fine. We're not doing it for show. We're doing it for function and it will work completely fine. So we can go ahead and put that on with our nice new shiny injectors. So is our fitting, is that a half inch pipe? No, oh, the end is, is a dash eight O-ring. Dash eight, that's right. Okay, pipe is a taper fitting. So if it's an O-ring, it's a straight thread, like a regular bolt style thread. And of course, it needs the O-ring on there. Here's our new injectors. These were donated by Bjorn. Thank you again, buddy. So these are our 1,000 cc's, actually 1,050 for just a little bit more horsepower than thousands. And these are Bosch injectors. So they're the, the nice little plastic looking deals. You see these, a lot of people are using this type 
of injector now but this should be a direct fit with this extension on there so we shall see all right so you know we've showed you in the past on an s2000 how you've put the hood in the engine swap position the integra was designed that way from the factory honda knew he was going to take the engine out and put it in a civic and then later on take it out of the civic put it back in your integra because now the integras are getting kind of rare and everyone in the eg already has a b motor actually they've all switched to k so now the b motors are coming back so the injectors are in now the fuel rail can go on there we'll put the hardware in hopefully it fits and we can keep moving so i want to say thank you again to skunk 2 for the throttle body this is another part that was included with our original deal with the manifold again it's black series it's the big billet 70 millimeter nice piece So you know what happens now it's looking nice we've got a line from here to the fuel rail everything looks good now the regulator that we have looks like crap okay so i just did some shopping for clamps um now this is one of those things that you don't see as often nobody uses these clamps they all like to use those t-ball clamps well we have a million t-ball clamps in stock but my personal opinion is I don't really like the look of them. They're way too wide. You've got the big buckle sticking out. You've always got to hide the buckle and you don't really need it unless you're going to run 50 pounds of boost. And in fact, if you bead roll your pipes and use a good coupler, I've tested these up to 100 pounds of boost. Well, we're only going to run, you know, 10, 15 on this. I mean, we could run 25 pounds. And it would be fine and it just looks cleaner in my opinion when i put these this way around and put them on a coupler i'll show you what i mean all right so this is what the t-bolts look like the t-ball clamps now when you put them this way they look nice but in my opinion they're just a little bit too wide and the idea is i like to have a little gap over here i like to have the bead on the bead has to be on this side of the clamp to make it work well to do them right you end up putting them kind of close together like this there isn't a lot of room for the pipe to have any kind of flex and then of course when you wind it down when you tighten it you have this big buckle sticking out which of course behind the bumper you can't see it but up in your throttle body area on the inlet of the turbo that has to go somewhere and i usually i don't like the look of it I'm not saying that you shouldn't use it I'm just giving you my opinion now these are what the clamps look like It'll be orientated something like that. And that buckle, we can hide it. We'll obviously make sure if it's in orientation, we don't want to have it like this. So you see a smooth part and you know the, the uh, geared part. We want to keep them even. But again, that's just my opinion. And it's not going to blow off. All right, so here's our nice fancy regulator. This, we mount it in the, uh, up on the firewall, I'm guessing. But basically what happens now is the fuel comes out of this fuel rail. And again, for the people that know this, you can just skip this part because all I'm doing is explaining what it does. We're gonna put a fit in on the end of here and run a hose into this. And then the outlet is gonna go into the factory drain, which is this hose right here. This fuel system, no problem. 500 horsepower no problem at all uh, if we increased the size of the drain to a dash six it would do 650 without a problem so we are definitely overkill here all right this is the radiator i ordered uh, it's going to be plenty enough cooling it's quite a bit thicker than the factory one it's not as thick as the mishimoto but one of the things i do like about it is it's obviously a good brand but it's thinner than most of the aftermarket ones and we're trying to keep as much room as we can because the radiator is going to sit here and we don't want it getting any closer to the turbo and any of the hot sauces so by being a little bit thinner it gives a little bit more room and like i mentioned we're going to put a puller fan on this side and as it sits in the car like this 
there is going to be a pusher fan on this side. That way we're going to get good flow across the whole radiator. We're going to have plenty of airflow and we're not going to have a problem keeping it cool or keeping the air conditioning working correctly. All right, so this is one of the Type R door panels. This is what it looks like. Of course, it's just got yeah, a little bit of dust on it, but it has to be cleaned and then dressed. But you can kind of see up here, the fabric. You see, it's kind of got that purple look. It's not too bad, but it's not as crisp and black as this one. This is one I just did. We'll just clean the door panel and dressed it, but that is after dyeing fabric. I see it looks much better when you see them side by side. It just looks much, much newer. So time to do that one, clean it up and do the dye work on that one too. All right, so the good thing is these are gator axles. They're the axles I put in a long, long time ago and they were in perfect shape. Just looked a little dirty and yucky. So I went ahead and sanded them, repainted them. Now they look nice and fresh. All right, so get your comments in. What do you think about this dirty old valve cover? No, this is what we're gonna put on right now. It's open here. That way, well, it's on, we can tune it, but we don't wanna make it look too bad. So the valve cover is off. We need to pull this cover off. It has Golden Eagle cam gears. That way we can dial them in on the dyno, get it where we're happy. Once it's making the most power, we have the optimum settings. Then we can put our finished valve cover on there and it will start looking like something. We're prepping right now so we can start it up. We need oil, uh, axles need to go in. We need to put the trans fluid in there. We need to put radiator fluid in there and we'll run it open header just for right now. We'll put the laptop in and kind of tweak it. Just make sure everything is happy before we go any further. If you remember that, that was a long time ago. I did this on the head, but that's the for a valve train that we put in there. A set of sparkwood wires for a 99 Civic SI, please. And a golden oldie. All right, so these are the NGK wires. They came on it and they're fairly new, but as you see, even though they're cool and blue, they don't really match anything. And I've always been a big fan of the OEM ones for the Honda car, so that's what we're gonna go with. And somebody's gonna say, hey, why don't you change the coil-on plug? It's much better. This matches the car. I like the look, it's nostalgic. And I made up 600 horsepower with one of these and some of these on my Type R. So this will be plenty and it looks like it's supposed to be there. So we're gonna put some CarQuest 10W30 oil in there. This is just conventional oil because everything is brand new in the engine. We don't want to put synthetic in there. We want conventional oil so it will break in. Once it's broke in and everything's good and we're happy, then we'll go ahead and change it to synthetic. But for right now, we're going to break it in on some good old dyno oil. So it's getting close now, it's time for the USB cable, time to reprogram the computer. I'm going to put in a uh, base map, this is going to be the same configuration as a B18C with some 1050cc injectors and a 4 bar map sensor. So last thing to do is put some transmission fluid in it, coolant is going in right now. So fingers crossed, it's been a long time in the making so fingers crossed. All right, so I've put a map together. And again, this is a base map. This is just kind of, to start it up. ECU is in it. USB is ready. As you see, we don't have seats in it right now. We're still cleaning and dyeing the seats to make them look super beautiful. And you know what? We don't have a dash in there. Maybe we should put the cluster in just loosely for right now. All right, so we're putting in Transfluid. I want to put the cluster in. I don't know if you remember this. This is the UK Type R cluster. It goes up to 160 and has a mark for 170. It also has the longer tack and the yellow needles. It looks cool. We'll put it in for right now just so we can kind of see what's going on, make sure they work, and 
I want to show you something we're going to do with this in one of the future episodes, but we'll show you how to refurbish this and make it look a little bit better. This is because we don't drink beer in the shop, so this is the closest thing I've got to drink. Calm the nerves. All right, so the suspension still looks kind of grungy because that hasn't been addressed yet. We're going to pull that apart. As you see, the axles look nice. The suspension and control arms and brakes still have to be refurbished and cleaned, but everything else is looking good. We don't see anything dripping out of it. That's always a good sign. Shift linkage is on. Like I said, we're going to run open downpipe right now. There is a cat on there, but it's still going to be kind of loud. But it's tradition. If your car doesn't start up first time on an open downpipe, means you missed a step. You should always run them open down by first, for all time's sake anyway. So transfer fluid is going in. Um, I'm gonna plug in that fan yet. Yeah. I'm still gonna tie that line up, but that's the cooling fan. The other fan I talked about earlier is right in there. Fits nice and snug in there. It's coming. All right, so the battery's been sitting a while, and it wasn't a really good battery in the beginning. I think we had to actually jumpstart it to drive it to put it on the dyno in episode one. So we'll give it a little bit of time, get a little bit of juice in there, double check, triple check everything, make sure we are all good. Now the back of the block is still open because the breather ports, I remember in an earlier episode, it's got the, the uh, half inch ports going off the back. They're going to be open. So we've got to keep an eye on those, so it might smoke a little bit out of those in the beginning. Uh, but for the most part, we should we should be good. Ready? Yep. Go a couple more times. Again? Again. So we're going to take the injectors off right now and just crank it, get some oil pressure, get oil circulated before we actually run it. It's just a good way to get oil all the way around so we don't run anything dry while it gets started up. All right, there it goes. Gonna build oil pressure. All right, we're good now. All right, let's try it. <laughs> the uh, brake boost is still off. It is. That's the high idle. Yeah. Well, it started, started smooth. Yeah, we have the brake booster hose off. We're having to use a different one because the skunk tube manifold is in a way different position so that's why that is off again that's some of the little things that you deal with on a fresh motor
makeshift so we don't blow vapors on the back of the block. It's pretty responsive. The idle's come up now, we adjusted the throttle body. So now it's on cold start. The idle is right about where it should be. Uh, ABS lines are not hooked up. SRS is on because this is an on SRS wheel. Uh, that is the uh, fluid, brake fluid is low, but there's no brake fluid in it because we haven't hooked the brakes up yet. Um, you know everything else. Let me tell you the relief to hear it run. We have had a couple of minor little hiccups, not a big deal, but uh, one, one of the fans was wired backwards, so rather than the air pushing that way, it was pushing this way. A uh, couple of little things, nothing major. But I mean, for the most part, it don't matter how many of these you build. Without exaggerating, I've probably built 200 engines. Every one of them seems like the first when you come to start it up. So, it sounds like there is a slightly noisy lifter right about here. When it's cold, you don't hear it. When it gets warm, it comes a little bit and it goes away. Fans are working properly now. Not that good. Yeah. That's better than it blowing the rag back out here. Nice. So our cooling system might be a little overkill right now. Because the fans are coming on early. We have that Mishimoto switch, a Mishimoto thermostat, the big radiator, and the small fans. Well the fans come on kind of early. The fans are kicking out at like 171, which is really too early. I really want to cut out about 185, 190. The cooling system should be more than capable of keeping it correctly temperatured, whatever I'm saying. I'm still, I'm still excited the fact that this thing is good and he's running. I mean, he's running good too. They burp the throttle again. Again, we just have to adjust the TPS. We don't have a white band on it. We're just kind of... Kind of tuned it by ear. I thought this is pretty close. But it seems pretty good. That lifter's getting noisier. I must have either ran one a little bit too loose or something, but probably got to pull the valve cover and take a look at that. So anyway, it's still a relief to hear it run. Of course, I felt comfortable and confident, but you know what it's like, it's first time. You're starting it up, you want to make sure everything's right. There's so many little things that could have been done wrong. I mean, there was a couple of little hiccups, like I say, but for the grand scheme of things, it was no big deal at all. I mean, a fan wired backwards, easy fix. Um, the ECU doesn't have a knock board, and we had, you know, knock sensor click, so it throws a code for knock sensor. Super easy stuff. But everything else runs good, idles good, sounds good, it's got a good oil pressure, it's very responsive. Next thing is going to be, of course, intercooler piping. That is something I want to say for a whole episode just intercooler piping because we've got some really special plans for it. And then, of course, an exhaust. Exhaust is going to be special too. I'm excited about that. I'm excited to show you it because it's another option for you if you choose to do this either yourself or with us. I think it's going to be something that will be very cool so thanks for watching this is the end of the video thanks for watching i appreciate it subscribe hit the like click the bell we'll see you in the next video and of course enjoy your car i'll talk about this one soon